What's going on there guys? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earth Master here on this Thursday, April 14th, 2022, about 4, 4, about 11.16 a.m. California time. April 14th is a date, there we go. Maybe it's the uh, G2 storm that's kind of kicking in here, giving me a little bit of mix up in my words. The latest quake on the globe shows a 2.4 over here in this area of the world. Let's go ahead and check out uh, some specifics first with the solar weather activity kicking up here. We did reach uh, G2 class conditions here within the last hour or so, uh, reaching up there around the KP index of 6, providing a uh, probably a good substantial show on the dark side of the Earth. Bad news for the North American folks here because it is daytime up here. Not necessarily going to be able to see it. So uh, unfortunately, the arrival of this is a, a little bit on the the sad side for the North American folks but like I said the other side of the uh, planet looks pretty uh, pretty awesome I'm sure current conditions there still shows that uh, KP index up there around the six level and uh, looking at the current Aurora oval shows it uh, looking pretty awesome on the map there at least once again for the dark side of the uh, earth uh, looks like conditions should linger for a little while this afternoon I think by the time it gets nighttime uh, along the uh, North American continent we should see a little bit of residual storming uh, from the expected uh, should be around the KP index of uh, between four and five G1 class storm uh, later tonight so we'll see how this goes it did I think it did arrive a little bit late uh, in terms of the arrival of that CME but uh, we'll keep an eye on it for sure and then after that, uh, things start to mellow down there uh, around the 16th and forward, unless we see something uh, significant pop off, but you never know. Uh, sunspot activity, not a whole lot going on here on the solar side. A couple new developments, but overall it looks pretty uh, bleak in terms of any significant flaring capabilities in the coming days. Uh, earthquake activity. Let's go ahead and check out the latest earthquake map here from the USGS. We are seeing a little bit of activity ramp up along the west coast, including a 3.3 earthquake in Nevada uh, near Dyer Nevada Nevada looks like uh, 5.9 kilometers for that 3.3 and also one down here along the San Jacinto fault zone a 2.6 near Borrego Springs let's go ahead and bring up the all magnitudes map here and uh, well it doesn't I mean it adds it adds a bunch on here but we haven't seen any significant uptick uh, in movement along the west coast it's been like that for a couple days now uh, Ridgecrest filling in slightly uh, around this area. Man, out here where I live, uh, just this train is nonstop. I was woken up at 6.40 a.m. this morning by this train, and I don't think there's nothing I can do about it except for uh, maybe uh, get another fan and put it right next to my head when I'm sleeping. Hopefully drown out the noise. It's annoying. It's like every five minutes. Uh, the San Andreas Fault Zone, some activity near Soledad. Pinnacles area 2.1, that one right smack dab on the uh, uh, the creeping zone, the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. A little small microquake activity uh, within that region. Uh, Northern California, not a whole lot to report. One earthquake here outside of Eureka last night. This was a 2.2 and a low earthquake activity up there in the Medford area and also, also off the coast of Oregon. Haven't seen any uh, further movement up there throughout the state of Washington. Go ahead and check out the latest map here on the PNSN network. Of course, it's been absent of tremor activity for the past couple days now. Kind of hard to believe that there's just absolutely nothing. You know, it goes from being a whole bunch to zero. I, I, I don't know. It just seems a little odd to me. Uh, volcanic activity. We'll check out the Mount St. Helens region. Boy, that train is just... I don't know if you guys can hear it. I'm sure you can. I hear it every morning. That's with uh, a fan on and earplugs. Let's check out the uh, seismogram viewer here at the Mount St. Helens region. See if these guys are reporting anything for data. And uh, yeah, definitely some earthquake activity here. Uh, earthquake activity right here. These are definitely some small microquakes. Even these little ones here within the last few minutes. Right here, not for sure what that is. Looks like, if anything, a distant earthquake uh, away from this uh, region but definitely a handful of uh, small earthquakes there at Mount St. Helens in the previous day as well. I know they have been reporting some of it on the PNSN network. USGS, not so much. 
but uh, even within the last well, last couple days, I don't think they reported all the quakes that were on that uh, seismograph map there that's recorded, which is good to keep an eye on. Uh, getting back to the earthquake activity or lack of earthquake activity in Pacific Northwest, Yellowstone National Park. Looks like a little bit of further movement out here in the Yellowstone region. Let's go ahead and check out the overview of the recorded seismograph stations there as well. And uh, looking like a little bit of movement down south here uh, in the area of Flag Ranch. It's been kind of seeing some swarms bounce around here in the region uh, from about northwest down here to the southeast. And now kind of a, a little bit of movement further south of the Long Valley Super Bowl or the um, uh, Yellowstone uh, Caldera region. And uh, a little bit of earthquake activity here. You can see those um, little spikes on this map. I'm not for sure how big they are. Let's go ahead and check it out here as we zoom in. Looks like about a 1.8. It's going to be the largest there at uh, 0620 UTC time. So that's going to be 0620 UTC time right here. That's going to be that one pointer, 1 1.8. All the other ones are much smaller, and there's a good handful of them in there. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, just kind of keep an eye on Yellowstone. It does bounce around a little bit and swarms. Uh, what else we got here outside of the Fort Bridger area, looks like, or Bridger, Bridger, Wyoming. <clears throat> got a uh, 2.1. This one's pretty deep, though, 32 kilometers way down there below the surface in southwest Wyoming area. Uh, Texas, Oklahoma, not a whole lot going on. One little earthquake outside of the New Madrid zone still <clears throat> near Wrigley. Tennessee at 1.2 eastern part of the country aside from uh, some potential weather issues today looks pretty clear in terms of earthquake activity uh, Puerto Rico Trench not a whole lot going on up here around the Puerto Rico Trench area uh, a couple of microquakes there southwest edge of Puerto Rico <clears throat> rest of the Caribbean it looks pretty quiet folks uh, out here around the San Salvador area in the Guatemala we, uh, region at 4.3 into the middle America Trench here 69.1 kilometers down into that subduction zone. South America still just hanging in there with a couple of earthquakes every once in a while. Seems to be fours, magic number. Uh, north of Santiago, Chile area, a couple of fours down there into the subduction zone. And one deep earthquake up here in the Bolivia area uh, earlier today, 262 kilometers deep into that uh, region there, 4.9 magnitude earthquake. Uh, let's go out to the Big Island, see what we got kicking off here. And it uh, looks like a typical day once again. No renewed uh, changes or any type of unusual activity. Just looks like a very common movement there around the southeast region. Uh, Alaska, a little bit of activity up there and to the north. Right around the Anchorage area northward towards Denali. One lonesome earthquake over here around the, kind of towards the edge of the Aleutian Trench. 4.1, 29.1 kilometers. Uh, the Kuro Kamchaka and Japan Trench remain relatively quiet. Not a whole lot going on throughout the Mariana Trench today or uh, the Papua New Guinea region. Uh, seen a little bit of activity south of Fiji once again. One earthquake here, pretty deep, 568 kilometers for the 4.4. Rest of this movement pretty shallow there at the trench level of the Tonga Trench area. And some movement here in the Horseshoe Bend uh, near the uh, New Caledonia area where we've seen that earthquake activity. Uh, last week Java Trench or at least the southern end 4.7 and low activity over here in the Indian Ocean and the southern Atlantic Ocean over here a little bit of plate movement and adjustment here with the Antarctic plate uh, overall though no major movement here to report even with this uh, considerable G strong G2 storm kicking up here we haven't seen anything major but then again I could be speaking a little early uh, last time we've seen some uh, events pop up there on the Sun uh, it took a little while for the uh, I guess the energy there to uh, stir up the plate dynamics we'll see what happens throughout the day but uh, once again still up there and still looking pretty nice on the dark side of the Sun or the uh, <laughs> the earth we're not on the Sun dark side of the earth uh, let's see what we got for current speeds and whatnot here according to this chart um, yeah, density's up there. Speed took a dynamic jump there when it came in. Starting to mellow out a little bit here. Uh, got the tilt here of the southern BT's, uh, BZ zone. So we'll see uh, We'll see what happens here as it gets uh, later into the evening here for the folks 
in the um, northern parts of North America. Here's another different map, the KP index still around 6 with uh, expected swarming or uh, storming. All right, guys, um, let's see what else we got to cover. I think that's about it. Going to call it uh, call it a short update. If something major happens, and like, like I said, the likelihood of something happening with this, swarm, with this uh, solar storm coming up, we could, uh, could, looking at an could be looking at an increase in earthquake activity today. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, and then again, maybe not. We'll just have to see. All right, guys, stay safe. Got a little bit of rain coming in in California and some wind and cold. I think it's only about 54 degrees out here compared to our uh, 90 degree temperature last week. Have a good day. Stay safe out there. We'll chat to you a little bit later tonight.